Good morning, Palom Road. Hope you're going to do well today. All right. Yes. Uh, how can I help you? All right, I'll ask them. Okay. They'll settle this. The, the, they'll help us settle this. All right. Joanne and I have been having a conversation uh, about peanut butter. I and mean, I'm not going to tell you uh, which one of us feels which way, but in the comments below, just tell us, is your favorite crunchy or smooth? Okay? Just in the comments, tell us the right way to have peanut butter, crunchy or smooth. All right. Good enough? First, a bit of a reality check. These offerings of inspiration began as a way to engage each other's lives. I mean, with church gatherings suspended, it seemed like a good investment of time to stay connected back in March. Of course, now, uh, many churches are cranking back up, and even ours has started some small groups. And you... Uh, are likely not as isolated as you were back in April. So I realize the clock is ticking on these mornings together. Uh, nevertheless, the COVID has spread as much isolation and depression as anything else. Thus, a morning of uh, Jesus said, keep going, is probably as needed as the morning cup of coffee. So Jesus says, don't lose heart. Now, it's going to sound odd, but the last thing a lot of people desire is a God who extends love and mercy to all people. I know, sounds weird, doesn't it? They like the idea of sort of a country club God, a place where not everybody is allowed. Now, this tale is as old as time. This argument is littered throughout scripture, history, and you can look around us and you can see the argument every day. People love the idea of exclusion. I imagine that you remember the reluctant prophet named Jonah. He was sent to a town called Nineveh, but he didn't much care for Ninevites. I mean, he preferred his religion, the one where he was allowed in and others were kept out. But the interesting thing about the book of Jonah is it reveals that he truly did know exactly what God was like, and God wasn't like him at all. And that's what really angered Jonah, is that he knew God was different than him. And you can hear it loudest and clearest in chapter 4. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. And he prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I told you when I was still at my home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew you are a gracious and compassionate God. I knew you were slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. I knew that was you. Now, Lord, take away my life. It'd just be better for me to die than to live. He'd rather died than to live with repenting Ninevites. Now, Jonah was hesitant to go to Nineveh because he knew God was slow to anger and abounding in love. Jonah detested God's nature of love and welcome, but he knew it was real. The word inexhaustible comes to my mind. It's an old word, but it means without limits. Jonah knew this about God and despised it. Further, there is an encounter with Moses recorded in chapter 33 of Exodus where God says, I have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. God is not one who limits the mercy. We are. This God abounds in it. We try to ration it out. Now, possibly you're thinking, uh, that's the way God is, but you know, you don't know me. Uh, 
most probably need a shot of mercy. I need a keg of it. See, I don't have to know you to know that that's just wrong-headed thinking. To know God is to know that God's love is unconditional towards you and towards me. This is the way the self-proclaimed chief of all sinners put it. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? No, not at all. <laughs> Apparently my actions, your actions, us being unfaithful, cannot nullify God's faithfulness. God's love is apparently inescapable. I guess that's why we've always called it good news. Even we can't screw it up. Now take a second before you go off to your day to share this, to just share it on your Facebook page. Too many people think they are beyond grace and that they've done something that eliminates them. That's nonsense. When you share this, you remind them God still cares, and you do too. And there's a place for everyone. Have a great day.